Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to estimate duration for your project and tasks, as well as Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to estimate duration as well as work effort within your project and within the tasks. Before we do that, I want to kind of explain what do I mean by that. Well, the duration is simply the delta between the start and finish date of a given task. You see in this project schedule, I've actually gone in and done my predecessors, etc. Um, you know, so for example, if I make this two days, you can see that the delta between one three and one four is now two days. Starts on Monday, finishes on Tuesday, so two days. Make it three days, you can see that, hap that goes to Wednesday, and everything else is trickling on from that. The duration column is always there, and typically the best way to estimate the, the duration of your tasks is to come in here and add some duration. What I want to do though is show you how to estimate the work. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, this task could dig foundation goes on for three days and if we assume that one person's working on it let's say Tom's working on it you know that work would be if he's working full time we're talking 21 hours for that if I actually right click on start and put insert column work 24 hours is that what I said maybe in my math wasn't working that's why we have Microsoft project to help us <laughs> So, um, you know, you can see three days, 24 hours. That's with one resource. If I actually take that resource off of the task, you'll see that the work goes down to zero hours. That's because no one's working it. It's just a duration. There's no work going on. So when we add a resource, by default, that resource is working full time on that particular task. You can adjust that if you like. So the work is calculated at 24 hours. Now, when you're going through and estimating, you probably want to be doing this before you've even come in and assigned your resources, right? Let's go and remove the resources out. So the first thing we need to do is estimate duration and how much work. Let's leave the resources out of it. To dig a foundation, it's generally a crew of people and it takes them 40 hours for a week, right? If there's a crew of people, it's going to be, let's say three on the crew takes them three days. So, you know, I estimate that the effort for that is probably around 100 hours of actual labor. If we have 10 people working it, they could get it done a lot quicker. If it's just one person, it's gonna take them, you know, two and a half weeks. So we come in and estimate the work at 100 hours. To lay the rebar, oh, it's probably only about eight hours of work. But, you know, it generally takes, you know, you have to, go in and put some in and then come back another day. And they generally do that over a three day period. Eight hours of work, three days. You see the disconnect. We've got a little bit of work going on over a longer duration. This is the real world. It's really important to actually come in here and estimate not just the duration, but how much effort is involved. So that's gonna affect everything from how much hours we have, work hours, to how much it's gonna cost ultimately. And I'll show you some of that. Pour the concrete, you know, that only takes a day, but it takes, you know, four or five different people to do it. We're going to say, you know, overall, it's about 100 hours of effort across the team. Correct walls, just one day, but, you know, there's a crew of two to do that, so we'll call it 16 hours. Maybe a little bit more if they have a bit more extra time, maybe we'll estimate it at 20 hours. Well, this is a milestone, zero day duration, zero hours of work. In the drywall, let's say that's going to take 10 days and it's going to take, you know, 40 hours. Boom. So as you can see, we can quickly come in. I'm just going to add these in here. Electrical takes 29 days. Maybe they're just coming in off and on and waiting for other people to do their work in between. But it's only roughly 80 hours. So they're working part time on that generally. So there we go. We've got the duration and the work for estimated. When we start now adding resources to these tasks, you can see how it's now calculating and adjusting for me. If you really want to get it a little bit more granular on this, what you can actually do is come to the view ribbon and check details. This is actually called the task form where we can see 
for a given task what's going on. So it's three days. We can see uh, how much work is going on for this particular task. Lay the rebar. Now what we have to do is actually assign a resource in here. Let's put Scarlet on that one. That's okay. Let's see how the work is calculated. Now, because it's a three-day task, only eight hours of work though, you know, she is now working 33%. So essentially, she's working part-time at 33% of her typical working day. As you come in and estimate the work and the duration, or well, the duration and the work in addition to that, you can get more granular. And you can see these calculations taking place rather than having a three-day task. And by default, it assigns that resource at 100% units. Therefore, it would have been 24 hours work as opposed to three. But because we've estimated the work, and we've estimated the duration, Microsoft Project calculates the unit for us, for Scarlet. Let's take another example of this. So paint the walls. We have not estimated a work effort for this one. So when I assign a resource to this one here, let's put Tom on that one. By default, it's going to be 100% units, full-time, boom, 80 hours. Full-time, 80 hours, two weeks, 40 hours a week. Do the same thing for hang drywall. Put Tom on there as well. You can see Tom's working 50%. We supply two variables, Microsoft Project calculates the third. By estimating the duration and the work, Microsoft Project is always going to calculate the duration in and sorry, the units for us. So if we do increase the duration, you see the work is actually going to go up proportionately to the units of that particular resource. So we put an extra two days, it added an extra eight hours because he's only working part-time, 50% 50, 50 duration, sorry, 50% units, which is four hours per day. So there we go. Estimating duration and work can really help you when you're calculating out the most important thing in your project, which is gonna be the costs. So as we come in and get very granular with this, the costs are gonna be calculated for us based on the resources hourly rate. Very important, when estimating the duration, estimate the work, so that when you assign a resource, we're getting an accurate picture of how many hours that particular resource is gonna work on that task. Not only that, as you add additional resources, if we go back to the Gantt chart view, you will see that the work can be split appropriately. So if I have 100 hours, uh, let's take a, another example here, 10 days, 80 hours, If I make this an effort driven task and assign a second resource the work will be split across both resources effort driven essentially locks the work for that task it says you know this task is 80 hours i don't care how many people you throw at it it's going to be 80 hours of actual work the duration can vary but it's an effort driven task there we go so because i had that first calculation of effort i locked it as i had and take away resources, it's going to really, really help me to keep that number of hours consistent. I could talk about this all day, but thanks so much for watching. I do have other videos. I'll post the link to it here uh, around tracking uh, effort driven and task types, which is exactly what we are talking about here with fixed duration, fixed work, fixed units, effort driven, all that stuff. If you want to get more granular with that, it will really help you as well. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I really appreciate your time.